What up, bitch? Bet you didn't think this was coming, did you? Ha <laughs> ha! Dark Souls Remastered. That's right. Listen. One game in the last 15 years will be remembered as legendary. And it's Dark Souls. Like, I know I say a lot of these games are classics, but this game absolutely cannot be understated in its importance. It is one of the most important games ever made. And it has... I mean, Christ, it spawned its own genre, you know, Souls-like games, games that took the mechanics of this game and ran with it. Like, this game is phenomenal. Not without its flaws, but phenomenal. And uh, I just all of a sudden kind of got into a Dark Souls mood, and uh, I want to play a little of it. I will be playing this game offline, uh, and there's a reason for that. I used to be... I used to play these games religiously, and... uh, Honestly, the trolls in the community kind of started to ruin the fun for me. And I'll give you an example. You're, you're, you know, in some level, just blasting away doing your thing. And you get invaded by someone called like, like number one, butt fucker who just shows up naked with a dragon tooth and just slams you in one hit and then sends you a message saying, get good. That's, that's what dark souls became for a while. And it was just started to be filled with trolls and, and motherfuckers saying get good and all the shit. And I know there's a lot of good people in the community too, but those people really kind of ruined the fun for a lot of people. And I kind of abandoned the series for a few years to be entirely honest. Um, but I've been feeling a little introspective recently and I wanted to play the game again, but I'll be playing offline completely solo, no invasions, no co-op, just, uh, just myself. I like it better that way. Also, I'll be going through the game, uh, trying to do a little bit of lore analysis and story interpretation as we go through. I am definitely not an expert at Dark Souls lore. There might be a lot of things I get wrong, uh, and that's okay. You know, that's okay. If I do get something wrong, feel free to, you know, respectfully correct me in the comments. And uh, otherwise, I think we should go ahead and just jump into Dark Souls Remastered. Let's make our character. Enter the character name. We're going to be called Last Fair Deal. That's who I am. His sex. Uh, we'll, we'll do male. Class. You know. You know, I like to play the bandit. I like to start off as the bandit. They got the high strength, high endurance. Yeah. I might got to go bandit. I think so. Or or Thief has high dex too, but they start off with a shitty ass knife. We're gonna go bandit. Gift? Master key. Always. Always go master key. Physique? Oh. Average? No way, I'm not average. Tiny head? Top heavy. Oh, Jesus Christ. It, it, we'll just go average. I, I I really don't care. I mean, we're never going to look at this guy's fucking body anyway. Nor are we going to look at his fucking face. Commoner. Hair. Um. God. God, these hairstyles are stupid. Let's go. Should we go emo? Let's go emo. All right. And then color. Uh, black. Black. The blackest emo. Here we go. Accept. Let's go. Woo! In the age of ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded by fog. A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire, and with fire, came disparity, heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. Then from the dark they came and found the souls of lords within the flame.
Nito, the first of the day. The witch of Isolith and her daughters of Chaos. Gwyn, the lord of sunlight and his faithful knights. And the furtive pygmy, so easily forgotten. With the strength of lords, they challenge the dragons. Gwyn's mighty bolts peeled apart their stone scales. The witches weaved great firestorms. Nito unleashed a miasma of death and disease. Seath the scales betrayed his own, and the dragons were no more. Thus began the Age of Fire. But soon the flames will fade, and only dark will remain. Even now, there are only embers, and man sees not light, but only endless nights. And amongst the living are seen Carriers of the accursed dark side. Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. your fate. Oh, hell yes. Welcome. Welcome to Dark Souls. So, there's actually a lot of information in that opening cutscene. But here's really what you need to know, like right now. At some point, this dark sign began to appear on people. And it branded them as undead. So what does it mean to be undead? Well, essentially, it means that we can't die essentially every time we die we are reborn at the bonfire and we continue however we need souls to stay sane or if you lose your will to live you can become hollow to be hollow basically means that you are a zombie essentially with no more rational thought 
and you just kill indiscriminately because you still seek the warmth of souls. You still seek that, but it doesn't matter because once you're hollow, you can never become human again. We obviously have been here for quite some time because we look like fucking shit. Um, and the people branded with dark signs, the undead, are essentially cast away and locked into prisons to, like the game said, await the end of time. And uh, we're stuck in a cell, and someone just dropped a body down here with the dungeon cell key. So let's have a look at what we have here. We have a black separation crystal. This black crystal, long a symbol of farewell, is granted to banished undead. The crystal sends phantoms back to their homes or sends you back to yours. Beware of fickle use of this item if you intend to nurture relations. Because we're playing solo, this won't really matter. Uh, but it says that it's granted to banished undead, so I don't know if that means that it's given to everyone as like a gift or what. Dark sign. The dark sign signifies an accursed undead. Those branded with it are reborn after death, but will one day lose their mind and go hollow. Death triggers the dark sign, which returns its bearer to the last bonfire rested at, but at the cost of all humanity and souls. We have the master key, which we got for our gift. This universal key opens any basic lock, tool of the trade for thieves, but in the cursed land of the undead, most doors are better left unopened. And we just got the dungeon cell key. Key to the dungeon of the undead asylum to the north. A mysterious knight without saying a word shoved a corpse down into the cell and on its person was this key. Who was this knight and what was his purpose? There may be no answers, but one must still forge ahead. We have a straight sword hilt. The hilt of this lost sword was found discarded in the undead asylum. Only slightly better than one's bare hands and not recommended for extensive use. Be certain to find a replacement quickly. Okay, cool. And then, uh, I guess you can consider the clothing that you wear as a backstory to your character. Hood worn by brigands who raid mountain hamlets and attack travelers. In addition to protecting against the blazing sun, dust, and sand, it helps them tell friend from foe in the heat of battle. So we can assume that we're a brigand, and we like to raid things and attack travelers. So we're good people, basically. Uh, the armor says an addition of, uh, the addition of metal over a base of cloth and leather offers good mobility and defense. And that's pretty much it for the other things. All right. Let's start moving on. Camera controls. These are messages left by the developers. Attack. So this is a hollow. Um, yeah, they don't look great. This is what we'll eventually become. If we run out of souls and lose our will to live. And if we look through those bars, we can see a big fucking demon. Stomping around. What's up, boy? God, I'm actually really excited to play this. This is great. I'm probably going to get my ass beat a lot. Because I'm not used to this game anymore, but... Rest at bonfire, recover HP. Here's the first bonfire, baby! Rest. That's all we can do. Quick note, this game actually rewards people that are, uh... that look around and pay attention to the surroundings. If you just pan your camera up... Look at that. There's another big demon waiting for us. And listen, you hear that stomping? Yeah, that means that this isn't the same one. It's another one. Get away. That's right. Run, bitches. Run from the asylum demon. It should be noted that you can actually fight him and kill him now. Uh, you don't need to, it's not necessary, but he will drop a weapon. That's not actually unique, you can get it later in the game, but it's a little reward if you, uh, 
manage to do it. I'm not going to, don't care. Our other bonfire. May as well rest. Checkpoint it. Get your shield! That's right. We got our spider shield. The bandit actually starts out with a pretty decent shield. Let's have a look at this. Shield of the Savage Mountain Bandits, uniquely shaped with a large black spider etched upon it, has resistance to poison. That's pretty nice. But, we're going to put that on our back. We dual wield around here. No shields. Come here, fucker. Where are you going? You little shit. Come here. Battle axe. Yes. Straight sword hilt, go away forever. Battle axe is ours. Standard battle axe inflicts regular damage, making it effective in various situations. Powerful attack due to its weight, but one wrong swing leaves the wielder wide open, so timing and proximity to the enemy must be judged carefully. That's right! Let's go. Ah! Asshole. One hit! Oh, I'm heavy now. I'm, I'm fat rolling. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to remove that. Oh, hey, look. It's the knight that dropped the key. He's sitting in there. We can't seem to get to him. There doesn't seem to be a way in. There's an item up there, but uh, that'll be a while before we can get that. But if we head down these stairs, we can find the first of many shortcuts in this game. This will lead us back to the bonfire. But, up the steps, and quickly run! Ah, you motherfucker, I'm rusty! But now we have a way in. And there's our boy, who must have uh, fallen through that hole. Oh, you. You're no hollow. Thank goodness. I'm done for, I'm afraid. I'll die soon, then lose my sanity. I wish to ask something of you. You and I, we're both undead. Hear me out, will you? So he's undead too. He says he's going to die and lose his sanity. Which I'm assuming means that he's given up. He's given up all hope of maybe getting out of here. It doesn't look like he's been a prisoner, but... Definitely seems like he's stuck here too. Regrettably, I have failed in my mission. But perhaps you can keep the torch lit. There is an old saying in my family. Thou who art undead art chosen. And thine exodus from the undead asylum maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. Well, now you know. And I can die with hope in my heart. Oh, one more thing. Here, take this. An Estus flask. An undead favorite. Oh. And this. Now I must bid farewell. I would hate to harm you after death. So go now. And thank you. So I kind of wonder if he was smashed through this by the uh, asylum demon that jumped down on us. And maybe he's tried over and over and over to defeat it, but he can't. And that's why he's given up hope. In game, he actually has no name. His name is never mentioned. However, everyone knows him as Oscar of Astora, and that's because a long time ago, I think uh, they uncovered some old files in the Xbox version of the game or something, and it, it actually names him as Oscar of Astora, and it's kind of become canon, I guess. Even though it was never used and his name is never mentioned in the game, it's become canon. So everyone knows him as Oscar of Astora, but technically speaking, 
his name is not known. Now I must bid Phil, I would hate and th But he gave us two things. He gave us the famous Estus flask. The undead treasured these dull green flasks. Fill with Estus at bonfire fills HP. The Estus flasks are linked at the fire keepers. The dark tales also make reference. An emerald flask from the keeper's soul. She lives to protect the flame and dies to protect it further. And then he also gave us the asylum or the undead asylum F2 East key. Key to the iron bars on the east side of the second floor of the North Undead Asylum. The Undead Asylum is a giant undead prison segmented by countless iron bars. Even if an undead were to escape from a cell, passage to the outside world would not be gained easily. So he tells us about a, a legend passed down by his family that one day a chosen undead will escape from the Undead Asylum and make pilgrimage to the Land of Lords. And when they ring the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead we will know. So that's all we have to go on. So we're going to take up the mantle of this unknown soldier, i.e. Oscar of Astora, and find out. And he kills himself, and we claim his souls. Up, buddy. Ah, you fucking bitch, dick, motherfucker. Ah, uh, it's gonna take me a while to get used to this shit. I'm already half dead. Three, y'all, huh? One. Two. Three. That's right. And we've also got a new guy. A harder guy. Uh huh. Suffer! That door's locked. We should probably heal up. Because we got an encounter coming up. Hey, buddy. Bitch! <laughs> oh my god. I missed. That's fucking embarrassing. I'm leaving that in. Come on, fucker. You got nothing. You're done. We got the big pilgrim's key and also something else. Oh, we got humanity. Rare tiny black sprite found on corpses. Used to gain one humanity and restore a large amount of HP. This black sprite is called humanity, but little is known about its true nature. If the soul is the source of all life, then what distinguishes the humanity we hold within ourselves? This is something... Humanity itself is a... Um, kind of a complicated topic and we'll discuss it later um, but it says if the soul is the source of all life then basically what is humanity what is this tiny black sprite but what it does is it restores us to human and recovers a large amount of HP we can collect it various ways one by picking up humanity one by killing a lot of people and uh, also if you're playing on co-op you can uh, I think when you help someone defeat a boss or something, you can also gain humanity that way. But we also got the Big Pilgrim's Key. Key to the inner door of the Undead Asylum main hall. Big key belonging to a chosen undead pilgrim. But this chosen undead knows not what this pilgrimage has in store. So... It's almost as if this was planted... on the demon. As a challenge for someone to beat him or best him and take the key. So it definitely feels in some respects as if the world has been waiting for someone like us, goddammit. Waiting for last fair deal to come and take it all. 
Good job. Go straight ahead. No, thank you. Because there's an item over here. That I'm going to take. Soul of a Lost Undead. Soul of a Lost Undead who has long ago gone hollow, used to acquire souls. Souls are the source of all life, and whether undead or even hollow, one continues to seek them. Now we're in some big graveyard. And we are, dude, we are out there, man. They really wanted the undead to be locked away. Because there ain't shit out here. And over here, we'll find an empty nest, which will be useful later. This is a merchant, if you believe it, where we can leave things that it likes and he'll trade us for good stuff. But it doesn't work for now, because we'll actually return here at a later date. Only in the ancient legends it is stated that one day an undead shall be chosen. To leave the undead asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. Lordran, level up and kindle at bonfires. Fireling Shrine! Ah, oh, that music. This is the shit. This is the shit! So, you can still think of us as a prisoner. Because we were taken specifically from the undead prison to Lordran. We we're forced to go into a pilgrimage, basically. We've escaped our cell. But we now have a pilgrimage that we have to undergo. And before we end this first episode, let's go ahead and talk to this guy over here. Well, what do we have here? You must be a new arrival. Let me guess. Fate of the undead, right? Well, you're not the first. But there's no salvation here. You'd have done better to rot in the undead asylum. But too late now. <sighs> well, since you're here, let me help you out. There are actually two bells of awakening. One's up above in the undead church. The other is far, far below in the ruins at the base of Blight Town. Ring them both and something happened. Brilliant, right? Not much to go on, but I have a feeling that won't stop you. So, off you go. It is why you came, isn't it? To this accursed land of the undead? <laughs> so that's actually kind of interesting what he says there. He says you're not the first. There have been potentially many people who have beaten the asylum demon and taken the pilgrim's key and come here. But they must have all failed. Ah, your face. You're practically hollow. But who knows? Going hollow could solve quite a bit. <laughs> mm, what? Restoring your humanity? Well, there are a few ways to go about it. Collect it bit by bit from corpses. 
or you can butter up a cleric and get yourself summoned. And the quickest way, although I'd never do it, is to kill a healthy undead and pillage its humanity. Coveting thy neighbor is only human, after all. <laughs> What are you looking at? Don't try anything clever. You might regret it. <laughs> hmm? What? You want to hear more? Oh, that's all we need. Another inquisitive soul. Well, listen carefully then. One of the bells is up above in the undead church, but the lift is broken. You'll have to climb the stairs up the ruins and access the undead burrow through the waterway. The other bell is back down below the undead burg, within the plague-infested blight town. But i die again before I step foot in that cesspool. <laughs> oh god, blight town. That's a famous place. Bloody hell, what is it now? You ask too many questions. Hmm? What now? I'm not up for chatting. Leave me alone. That's it? Hmm? I'm yeah, that's it. Alright. We're here. Dark Souls has begun. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and end this episode here. There might be episodes that are shorter or longer, depending on the area we're in, but I, I kind of want to keep this on a chapter basis, so... We finished the Undead Asylum, so we're gonna call that good. Next episode, we'll go ahead and explore the Firelink Shrine and see what's happening here. So thank you very much for joining me on a new journey. I will see you next time. You stay safe out there, and have a good night.